right, thanks everybody for, for joining us today. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start it. I've got uh, three announcements so that Linda doesn't strangle me. I will make them. <laughs> uh, let's see. So at the end of the presentation, we're giving away an Echo Dot. Uh, Linda has a glass bowl up here, so make sure you put your business cards in that. She'll wander around here. Um, if you don't have a business card, just write your name, email address, contact information on a piece of paper and throw those in there. Um, there's also a couple of other things going on. You're also welcome to take the, twi the uh, coasters and the SMIS and Swordfish cards in front of you uh, with you. Uh, there's also a Twitter contest going on today. Um, so just get creative. We'll be uh, using the hashtag, two hashtags, the SDC17, as well as hashtag storage management uh, to tweet about anything that's going on in the SRM track today, which is Swordfish. Swordfish, swordfish, and swordfish. Um, there's actually a couple of other uh, other tra um, topics going on today, but uh, uh, best tweet um, sounds a little subjective, but you know um, we'll pick the best tweet at the end of the day. There's prize to go along with that as well. Another Echo Dot. Another Echo Dot. Uh, surprise, surprise. Um, but uh, don't forget to be tweeting about that. Um, I would uh, tell you you're in competition with me, but I'm not eligible to win. So, um, but uh, you know, be, be tweeting along and, and uh, identifying, you know, letting letting folks know what's going on today out there. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, we have uh, several presentations in a row today where we'll be digging into progressively more information about what's going on. Uh, in the swordfish space, this first one is a quick introduction or a high-level introduction to what's been going, what's going on in swordfish right now. So, if you guys have seen information uh, or presentation already about introduction to swordfish, some of this might be a little bit repetitive, but we wanted to make sure we kind of uh, introduced anybody who hasn't seen the material before uh, to an overview of swordfish and what's been going on um, over the last few months, last year, since the last time we talked about that here. Uh, the next presentation we'll be talking in uh, quite a bit more detail than later in the day. We'll be talking about some implementation experiences, um, what's been going on as folks actually dive into some implementation. And at the end of the day, well, there's a couple other presentations as well. And then at the end of the day, we finish everything up with a panel uh, of several folks that have actually been, been uh, uh, starting to implement uh, Swordfish. So there's a ton of stuff going on today. Um, I hope you have a chance to kind of sit through all of it and and be overwhelmed. Uh, okay, let's see. Moving on down. Come on, move ahead. Hello. All right. All right. So uh, this, what we're basically going to be talking through in here today is, you know. Uh, this doesn't quite match up with what you'll see online. I reworded it, of course. Um, <laughs> but basically, what is Swordfish um, and kind of what have we been working on? Um, so, you know, there's the short version. Let's see, come on. Oop. And of course, there's a standard disclaimer here, right? This stuff is all work in progress. Uh, we released the, the version 1.0 spec um, as a SNEA technical position last September. But uh, most of the stuff that we'll be talking about and that we've released as work in progress is all, uh, you know, just that. It's a work in progress. Um, so subject to change without notice. Um, this URL, if you remember nothing else from what I tell you right now, it is on the coasters. It is on the cards. Remember this piece of information today, snea.org slash swordfish. Um, this is where you will find every you know everything current. Uh, if you're not, if you don't start working on Swordfish right now, you wait through six months. Um, you go home and you want to start looking up stuff right now. This is where you will go, and you'll find the latest uh, information. You'll find pointers to everything we talk about. Snea.org/swordfish. All right. So, what are the drivers for Swordfish? You, if you were in listening to John earlier, he talked about what the drivers for Redfish were, um, and the you know the the you know, con uh, the uh, the drivers for for you know ser for servers was this proliferation of large scale data centers, things like that. Um, so you see you see a little bit of that same kind of thing in the storage space as well. Um, but uh, you know, 
we, we also have a slightly different history in the storage space, right? So customers have had, you know, kind of SMIS around for a long time. We've had kind of a single management API, but the storage world has been changing a lot. So we've got kind of two, to, two or, well, multiple factors, but those kind of two different threads moving, right? The storage world has kind of been shifting in terms of the way people are deploying things. Um, and so we need to be reactive to that. But we also had a lot of people asking for inputs and changes in, in the existing standards. And so we basically took a lot of those different kinds of things into account, right? So, you know, what can we do in our, in our APIs, in our standards to make those uh, simpler to implement and consume? Right, so uh, a lot of the existing standards uh, were built from a vendor perspective, right? Here's, here's all of the detailed information. Uh, so from, but from a client perspective, from a consumer perspective, I want this set of data. Can you give it to me in a single, in a, in a single command? Um, so that's, you know, improving that access efficiency. So fewer transactions, more useful information at once. Um, you know, I want to get stuff through a standard browser, right? It's not simply a storage admin looking for data anymore. It's, you know, it's my DevOps guy, right? Um, so how do I, you know, how do I provide something that's both for a storage admin as well as for a DevOps guy? Um, and again, the, the storage market has really changed, right? It's not DAS and SAN anymore. We've now got cloud. We've got hyper-converged, hyper-scale. Um, so how do we make a standard you know, modify a standard or make a standard that can actually meet the needs of all of those types of storage environments. So that's really what we kind of stepped back and said, okay, um, how can we, how can we react to that? Um, and so, you know, a couple years ago, we basically said, um, that's, that's what we need to do. And so we said, okay, um, let's take all the learnings we have from you know, years and years and years of uh, SMIS development, um, a bunch of work that had gone into that, and uh, uh, but let's also do look at what uh, DMTF has been doing with Redfish, um, and take those two starting points um, and and just kind of start from there, rather than you know making a, you know a continued evolution of something that. Uh, you know, uh, it's frankly a, a hard, you know, a hard implementation point. It was hard, uh, you know, something that's difficult for for both uh, clients and uh, vendors to to implement from. Um, so the the other kind of piece, and I'm, I'll talk a little bit about it in here, but lots more in the next session, is moving to. Uh, oops, sorry, I have a. Very sensitive mouse. Um, move to class of service-based provisioning and monitoring, um, and so this is something that's that's really, um, really interesting to drive into a standards-based um, API. Right? We're not we're no longer just saying we're going to expose every single attribute of the system and leave this from a uh, a vendor perspective. We're actually driving class of service into the standard. Um, okay, and then obviously, you know, traditional stuff like let's cover block, file, and object. Um, and we already talked about extending the domain so that we're covering DAS and SAN, and we're gonna, and, and then moving that to, you know, all of these convergent environments. Cover, and, and not just focusing on storage, right? Nobody just does storage anymore. You gotta cover, cover storage network. And, and servers and make sure it's a really, truly integrated thing, right? So this is where our approach then of saying, we're gonna extend Redfish uh, and make, and you know, the stuff that if you're in here listening to John earlier, um, where we have Redfish that is seamless, um, you know, Redfish and Swordfish are not different things. Uh, and we'll talk, you know, he talked a little bit about that. I'll talk more about that. Um, they're not different things. We build Swordfish using Redfish. Um, and so, and Redfish is, is adding networking. And as we build storage networking infrastructure, it uses the exact same components. Um, all of these things need to be a seamless integration. We can't um, manage data centers, particularly from a standards perspective, with uh, 
divergent standards, I guess, is, is a way to say that. They have to be, they have to be um, all integrated together. And having them all be based on the same schema and allow vendors to implement them uh, in a completely integrated fashion. Um, okay, so how we did that, you know, no surprise here, right? We leveraged the, the Redfish spec, um, and Swordfish is built as a pure extension of that. All right, so who is developing Redfish and Swordfish? Um, we really like this picture because this kind of gives an idea, um, and John talked about this earlier as well, is, um, you know, it's the same companies. Um, you know, the, those groups in the middle, a lot of the people that are really active in developing Redfish, it's the same companies that are really active in developing Swordfish. So it's not, you know, you can see there's a group of people that care about the swordfish, Redfish side and a group of people that care about the Swordfish side, but that overlap is, a, is a, um, just as many people in the middle as there are on either side. Right? Okay. So uh, I want to spend a little bit talking about, you know, what we've been doing um, and how, how things have been growing, right? So uh, we mentioned, you know, we kind of, I already mentioned that we basically rolled this stuff out last year, but um, we're basically, you know, two years into this thing. We started a little, well, not even quite two years ago. We basically kicked off the TWIG, um, the technical work group, is a, it's called Scalable Storage Management. So if you hear someone you say SSM, that's the group that produces the Swordfish spec. Um, we kicked that off in December of 2015. We released the first version of the spec nine months later. And the reason we were able to do that is because all we did was build the storage specific pieces on top of Redfish. Um, we in I'll talk in a little bit more detail here in a minute about what about what that means and how much of that we leveraged. Um, and then once we did that, we basically spent uh, the time since then and this year focusing on validating that rather than throwing a bunch more crap into it <laughs> and and focusing on helping you know get some initial implementations out there. Some of that's proof of concepts to validate that. Some of this actually helping folks to say, uh, okay, let's actually start to get some implementations out there. Um, you know, put it, driving documentation, um, supporting materials. I'll once we go through some examples and some details of stuff, I'll circle back around and provide some more information on all of this too. Again, you know, things like open source tools, infrastructure development. Uh, we're not duplicating duplicating anything. And John talked about a bunch of these earlier as well. On the Redfish side, we just use all of those. We're developing some additional stuff to help Swordfish, and also some of the stuff we're developing the Redfish teams can use directly. So everything we develop, they can use, and everything they develop, we can use. Um, and uh, you know, and then we're we've been doing a bunch of plug fest, so we'll talk more about that too. So what have we put in in 1.0? What's out there? Um, Block storage, provisioning with class of service control. You can see I highlight that everywhere because that's a that's a really key mechanism. Volume, you know, volume mapping and masking, replication, capacity and, and health metrics, um, file system. Um, you know, so uh, it adds. You know, how do we do that? We added, you know, basically file system and file share. But other than that, it uses the entire block system uh, model. So it's not a com you know completely divergent model. It basically just added a couple of schema and then leverages entirely the the, the block storage model. So it's a, a very um, ex again it's extensible, right? The same way we leverage Red Redfish to develop Swordfish, we leverage the block model to develop file system. Um, and. Uh, Additional content, uh, we added the object drive storage, not, not full object store, but object drive storage. Um, so that's kind of the, the level of functionality that, that we rolled out. We've been adding some incremental functionality. I'll talk about that, some of the de details about that. So, so John kind of showed a little preview of this picture, right? He talked a little bit about you know, um, what's actually the hierarchy of, of Redfish. I'm going to talk um, through this again a little bit so that I can talk about what we added into 
uh, into Swordfish and how we structured this. Um, and uh, just just real quickly, uh, how many of you, I mean, I know some of you were in here for John's presentation. How many of you have seen this before? So I can see how to go through, how much detail to go through. Okay, I'll, I'll spend a little bit of time on it then. Um, so, so the basic way that, that the redfish tree is structured is there's this kind of a split between the logical structure and the physical structure. And then there's this third area, you can kind of think of it as, um, from the redfish perspective, it, it's called managers, but that's where they put the BMC stuff. From the historical storage management perspective, we will extend that area to put what we think of as you know the the storage manager storage management as well because um, it's you know where we've had you know simoms and and the like um, we can we can lump that kind of functionality in there so a lot of our implementations that have things like um, uh, external or, or uh, integrated management cards and stuff um, we can ex we can just extend that functionality there uh, they tend to be a little bit bigger than BMCs but um, we can. Uh, you know, logically, it's a, it's a good logical place in the model to put that, that capability. Um, so the, the systems up here on the top is kind of think of that as the logical system. The chassis is, again, where you put the physical components. So you can see over here, you know, power and thermal um, kinds of things. But the, the system up there is that logical view of the system where you'll see processors, disks, and NICs modeled. Um, and so we basically took that, that same system and said, well, you know, there's not a single thing in there that you don't use to comprise a storage system. So we will just take all of that and reuse it. But, um, and so we, you know, squish the model down and we layer in purple for SNEA. Um, <laughs> uh, the, uh, we layer in basically two key components of the model. Um, and so a couple of things you'll see actually see here is when you're, there, there are a couple of things that I, I think, um, well, I'll call out explicitly because you'll see them again in a little bit, is when you're talking Rust, um, there's a couple of different ways that Rust can model, but we're using an explicit um, hierarchy here. So the slash redfish slash v1, everything will be show up under the trees exactly like this. So you've got these services over here, sessions, accounts, schemas, uh, events, um, firmware updates, some other ones that aren't on here. Um, they will basically show up exactly in that hierarchy when you are navigating a system. Um, the, these other ones will actually also show up in what we call the Redfish service route. Um, so you'll see the slash managers there, the slash chassis, the slash systems. We've added these other two to the service route for storage. Um, so we've added storage systems, which again, it's that logical view of a system. And then the bulk of the functionality actually goes into a storage service. So let me talk about a storage system for a second. A storage system is really, you can kind of think of this as uh, a logical, um, you know, it's the same way we have a logical system. A storage system is really um, an extension of a system. Um, so if your system is actually comprised of an off-the-shelf server, it would be basically identical to that system, um, basically have exactly the same properties with just an additional parameter that says, I'm a storage, I, I'm running storage. There's literally one property different. Um, it's, it basically inherits from a system. If it's a, a, a controller, you know, like an array controller or something like that with some, some custom ASICs or something like that in it, it might have some additional properties in there but that's the kind of thing that, it would, that this would be modeling. Um, and then the bulk of the rest of the information is actually up in the storage system. So the storage system is where you have your uh, class of service, your volumes, your files, your replicas, your storage pools, all of the, you know, the things that your, your, your clients and your usage is actually gonna care about from a uh, you know, day-to-day -day perspective. Storage systems, uh, the chassis, uh, the managers and everything is from your uh, you know, diagnostics, 
uh, maintenance, all that kind of perspective. Um, but you know, someone coming along like uh, cloud usage or you know uh, um, VMware infrastructure, you know anybody managing at that level, it could stay entirely only ever talking to your stored services. Um, okay, so what would a what would a storage implementation or a swordfish implementation ever look like? Let me take you down into some of the tools we're developing that you can actually go out and look at um, right now to see what they would look like. Uh, again, so John talked about this, one of the tools that, that uh, Redfish has been using and Swordfish is using as well are mockups. Uh, so we've, we're using uh, these mockup tools. Um, they're, they look like snapshots of a state and time um, of different types of systems. So we have several that we published um, that uh, as well that you can actually go look at and say, hmm, you know, what would you know this a small system look like? What would a you know this type of system look like? What would a file system look like? Um, do not treat these as normative. You know, do not treat them as you know uh, uh, anything other than you know this is kind of an example. Um, but we have a site set up called swordfishmockups.com, and uh, you can actually go just navigate your way around on that site and and, and look and see at you know some ideas of what the system might look like. Um, what some different types of systems might look like. So we have uh, three or four different systems out there right now that you can just kind of get an idea of what it, uh, what systems might look like. Um, and again, these are all static. They're not going to respond to anything. You're not really going to be able to configure them. Um, and I'll talk more about some other things we're, we're developing that will get set up that will uh, give you more flexibility in the future um, to actually play with things. Um, but I'll walk you through here in a sec um, what's, what the systems actually look like. And then you can use this site later to go play around with. Um, OK. So the, uh, this, um, if you want to talk about, oh my god, no time. OK. Uh, so, if we want to talk about like how to maybe looking at exploring the Swordfish data model a little bit to see what a system might look like, um, what I've done here, and if you're in the back of the room, I'm sorry, you're really not going to be able to read that very well. So, um, kudos to the guys sitting in the front. The uh, 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 what you can actually do though is um, this is the same information that's out on that Swordfish mockup site. Um, but what you can actually do is just kind of navigate through the model and see some of those same hierarchies that we just talked about. Um, but let me walk you through a couple of just examples of some different things you might actually want to do. So um, I mentioned that we're very use case centric um, as we developed and very client centric as we developed Swordfish. Right? We didn't really take the the previous approach of saying, well, here's Here's every possible function that every vendor has. Let's throw them all in there. What we what we, what we did was we basically said, you know, here's a bunch of use cases that that the clients actually want to do. Um, so let's focus on um, instrumenting those instead. Uh, so there's not necessarily everything you might possibly think of. It's what do the what do the clients that are involved in the process actually want to do? Um, so, but I'll walk you through a couple, you know, a, a use case or two here. Uh, I might only have one in here. Um, there are getting a lot of slides, so I think I might have cut it down to one. Uh, but we'll we'll walk through one, uh, at least one, to kind of give you an idea of how to navigate the system. Um, so there are a couple of different use cases, or a couple of different mockups here. Um, so uh, typical REST hierarchy. What you do is you, we kind of said. Uh, you, you might be sitting here first thinking, uh, well, geez, I don't know how the system's organized. Well, that's kind of the nice thing about REST. Unlike SMIS, you don't actually need to know how the system's organized to go navigate your way through. We can just start clicking our way around and, and uh, understand the details so, and, and learn. So what we do is we start at the top. We navigate it into the system. So we selected the Redfish, um, went into Redfish V1 and then um, clicked on the storage services link 
um, to go navigate down. Um, so then we said, okay, well, let's go look down through. Uh, there's three different there's three different systems here. So we this would be how you would go down and see the details of any one of the three, right? So what do we want to do? Um, well, let's just get a quick overview of what's in these different systems. Um, so in a block service, you kind of you can see a bunch of these different components that we've talked about. There's class of service, uh, and if you dig down into those, classes of service are comprised of lines of service. So if we go look at a class of service, you'll see how those are built um, out of different lines of service. And there's five different types of lines of service that you can build from. Um, and uh, then there's volumes, and there's storage pools, and there's storage groups and endpoints and all these different structures in here. So we can go navigate around and just look and see uh, the details for each one of those kinds of systems. So what's a file system look like then? So a file system basically says, well, that's pretty much exactly the same, except now there's file system, you know, there's a, there's a file system construct in there. And you go into that, and then you'll see the file shares. Um, other than that, it's, it's roughly identical. OK, so let's discover something. Um, Let's see if I have space to, uh, well, let's see what's one of the most common things I want to do. I want to allocate storage. Um, so let's go see if I can navigate down to in one of these systems and if there's enough capacity to, to create a volume. Well, I create volumes out of storage pools, right? So let's go see if, let's go find a pool on one of these systems and see if there's enough space to allocate a volume. So we'll, um, we'll, we'll navigate down and, and uh, so we never, well, that's weird. Uh, I apologize. What am I? Um, okay, so we never, a slide missing here, sorry. So we've navigated down in, uh, sorry, there's a slide missing here. Uh, but uh, we basically can navigate down into, um, into a storage pool uh, off of, I back up here one. If I go down into block here, like uh, so, from off of this, off of the storage system, I can see over here. There's a storage pool. Uh, yes, so I can see these storage pools. I navigate down into here on the slide that's missing. Go down into there. I can see a couple of storage pools. And then as I navigate forward into here, I can see I go down into this storage pool and I can see, well, look, yes, there's capacity here. So I can actually go say, I can use this pool to create a volume. Um, and uh, so I, you know, I'm checking its remaining capacity by looking at the capacity structure here to say, yep. There's a consumed capacity versus allocated capacity. There's space left. I can go create a volume out of this capacity, out of this one. So just navigating around, going down that structure, I apologize for the one missing slide there. <laughs> um, I can go check and see that the that there is enough capacity. Or I can, you know, that's just, you know, just one way to go look around and and uh, see just one particular system that I might want to go, or one thing that I might want to go do in that system. And, and uh, um, just real quickly, not knowing anything about how anything was structured in that, I could just navigate around and, and, and find some useful information. Um, OK. So you know, what else is going on? Um, so we mentioned kind of. Uh, now, I mentioned that we're kind of adding a bunch of incremental information, and we're looking at uh, adding uh, uh, functionality. We're starting to see some, some implementations happening this year. About every th three-ish months, two to three months, we've been releasing updates. So you can see January, uh, January, May. We've been trying to get a release out um, in uh, this month, next month, uh, that's just to kind of you know clean up some so based on some of the implementations. Um, so we started having uh, uh, some implementations um, 
in and feedback from those implementations. Uh, June, oh, we've got some plug fest. I'll talk about those, and uh, I have a, time, a slide not on that. I think next. Uh, but what we're starting to see is some implement, some feedback that basically says, clean. You, how, how about a little bit of cleanup here? Maybe we could simplify some stuff here. So that's kind of some of the kind of stuff we're seeing in this release. So we pushed it out a little bit so it can wait. Uh, get a little bit of cleanup there, but what we like to do is have releases every three to four months, not huge releases. Um, we're not trying to drive a lot of functionality in. What we're trying to do is, um, you know, there's a lot of focus on, you can see um, supplemental materials here. Um, you know, we've got, uh, you know, spec, Oop. there we go, some spec editions, um, and uh, some of the supplemental documentation as well. Um, so some of the other stuff that we're starting to do in parallel is uh, look at flushing out some portions of the, of the models that aren't there yet, and some schema that aren't there yet. Uh, we've got, um, and, and again, John talked about, you know, we've got the PCIe. Um, and NVMe over over fabric um, that uh, models that folks are starting to become very interested in. What we're looking at also doing is going back in and and ensuring that some of the areas like the converged network adapters um, models get completed, uh, and uh, looking at you know what are we likely to need in the fiber channel fabric space. So there's that Yang work that's happening over in Redfish. But um, folks are looking to SNEA to say, what are you doing from a fiber channel fabric perspective? Um, so we're looking at things like how much of that work needs to be complete? What are people going to actually be looking at from an end-to-end -end model tying the swordfish models out to that? Um, and uh, so as we do Yang conversions of fiber channel, does it really need to be super complete, or should it just be like monitoring um, high-level information? Again, kind of going back to what I was talking about a little bit earlier. Um, what are the use cases for it? Because we don't need to have a super complete, you know, really, really detailed implementation um, with lots and lots of controls on it if nobody's going to use it. So, what are those use cases? And then we can flush that out and make sure that we have you know, the sufficient level of detail for who's going to be using it and who wants to use it. But we also have some holes that we have, you know, plugging everything in end to end. Um, mm -hmm. And we want to make sure those are covered. So that's kind of the, when we talk about the fiber channel model, that's what we're talking about is, you know, kind of plugging everything in um, end to end. Um, we have some future things here, uh, object storage, storage specific um, security roles. Right now, we haven't had uh, we've we've had a lot of interest in object storage, but we haven't had anybody sign up to actually do that work. Um, the security user roles is another one where we've had we think we need to have the implementations further along before anybody's going to step up and say this is what we really need here. Um, so those are ones that that get down on the list. So um, you know we don't we don't want to forget about them, but we just don't think we need to we haven't needed to do the work yet. Uh, okay, so I, I talked about some um, supporting materials. Um, one of the things that we've added uh, and made available starting this year, is, starting this, this summer actually, is what we call the, the practical guide. Um, in the past, we've looked at doing, for other standards, we've looked at doing things called for implementation guides. One of the issues with implementation guides is they tend to be done very, very late once there's a lot of implementations. Um, and what we decided to do with Swordfish was actually roll out what we call an, a, a, the practical guide, which is, um, it's not a spec, it's not a user's guide, it's an amalgamation, you don't get to use that word very often, uh, an amalgamation of a whole bunch of content in a bunch of different sources targeted at kind of every different type of consumer from, you know, implementers to um, folks looking for general information, uh, whether you're implementing a client or you know provider side, uh, it's you know 
introductory material, um, advanced material, just little bits of information all over the place that we can put together. And as someone's got a question, as we find, you know, figure out a new way of doing things, we put little tiny bits of information all together in one spot. So it's, uh, and, and we, we can grow it um, kind of organically. And so we don't have to kind of wait to have, be really, really experienced to put the material together. So I would encourage folks to take a look at that. If you have content to submit, if you have questions about it, um, we put this out. It's, again, available at snea.org slash swordfish. Um, there's a link to the practical guide. Um, it's got links to, it should have links to pretty much every piece of content we have about swordfish and also a whole bunch of links to stuff about redfish because every piece of information about redfish also applies to swordfish. And so um, those are, uh, um, that's, that, you know, so, uh, online resources that should be, you know, if you want to have any questions about that, go use those. Uh, go, go check that out. Um, we've also started similarly to, you know, and these, there's links to the Swordfish School within the practical guide, but we've also started putting together some short, Little videos um, available on the SNEA sword, or the Swordfish you easy for me to say the SNEA YouTube channel um, that explains some of the more um, complicated uh, swordfish concepts. Um, again, short, relatively short videos, but things that help kind of break down swordfish for you. Um, and so we've started putting some of those out on the uh, YouTube channel. Um, and then some other material that's coming. There's a bunch of marketing materials to help raise awareness of swordfish and, and things like that that, that we're working on. Uh, let's see. Ah, yes. Um, these are just, we ha we're also working on, and we'll be rolling out this fall, uh, a bunch of SNEA-sponsored open source projects. Uh, and we're very excited about these. Uh, we think these will be something that will really help advance um, uh, folks' understanding and ability to deploy uh, Swordfish. So a couple of those, uh, the Swordfish emulator extensions. Um, this is not starting a Swordfish emulator from scratch. Again, we, we leverage the Redfish emulator and just add the Swordfish pieces on top of it. So. You take the open source Redfish emulator from DMTF and then come over and take the Swordfish open source emulator pieces, drop them in on top of that to build the Swordfish emulator. Um, and so we use this for a couple of different pieces, reasons, one of which is, you know, then you can have an emulator. So unlike the mockups, it'll actually respond to uh, posts and patches and puts and things like that. Uh, but uh, and it'll be you know somewhat interactive, but it also is a tool that we uh, in the uh, in the twig can use to kind of try out some concepts and you know and see how things work. Um, but again, that, that's all open source, so people can take that and and contribute to it or or you know whatever. Um, next one uh, from on the client side is a basic Swordfish web client. It also works against Redfish implementations. Um, this one is, you know, sure, Swordfish is all web-based, but um, navigating around through um, Rust can get a little tedious, uh, so or dealing with Python or whatever. So this is actually just a simplification of I can bring up a web client, I can you know give it an IP address, username, password if it's if it's got it, and I can talk to anything that um, any Redfish service or Swordfish service and navigate my way down through. Um, it will compare it to the schema, and if it's supposed to be able to read and write, it will give you the option of being able to read and write uh, that, that uh, property and um, allow you to configure you know, the portions of the schema that are supposed to be able to configure. So it's just a really nice basic, um, and it sorts the information for you um, in a couple of different ways, uh, but um, just a you know nice simple way to give uh, a presentation, you know, a web-based presentation of, this, of the data for you. Um, we also are are supporting the development of a couple of different sample integrations into some data center um, 
uh, management environments. One is Power BI and another is Datadog. And so what we've done here, and these should be roughly equivalent functionality, but we have some thresholds and things that are built into the Swordfish API. And so we've built some sample integrations um, that will basically let anyone pick them up and use them as a starting point for how to, you know, both here's how you integrate into Power BI, but also here's how, um, you know, here's how you integrate Swordfish into this environment. And you may or may not be interested in the sp that specific integration, but it's a starting point, right? So, um, so uh, you can, uh, you can, you can, you know, use those as a starting point. You can use those as an example, um, and, but it should, it should give anybody who's using those platforms, you know, a leg up on how to interact with um, with Swordfish systems. And uh, um, okay, and then I talked about implementation support, right? We've been having Plugfest. Um, this is this has been a key driver of ours all year. We want to we want to get those implementations going. We want to validate that what we've done in the spec is correct, that it's not too complicated, that we've got the right set of functionality in there, all of those kinds of fun things. So we started uh, Plugfest in June. There's actually been a Plugfest every month since then, including one this week here. Um, we have been working to keep these initial ones actually open to everyone, um, and so we've actually have. Uh, we have we have one company that's actually got a public um, implementation, uh, public integration out there. You can um, that's uh, that's they're open and blogging about it. It's a company called Starwind. They are not even a SNEA member. We basically talked to them last year at Ignite about about Swordfish, and they said, "Oh, this is neat." Wandered off. A few months later, we heard back from them, and they're like, "We built one. Look." Um, so, so, and there's a blog about it. You can actually go Google it, and and um, they've, you know, they've been they've been blogging about it and, and uh, talking about it. Um, and then we have several, you know, what six companies I think that have been participating in our plug vests uh, for the last several months. Um, bringing in, so we have multiple implementations that folks are working on, some proof of concepts, some actual implementations. And um, since nobody else has announced, that's pretty much all I can say about those. But but it's it's actually you know quite a bit of quite a bit of work. Um, I've been really really pleased with um, with how little um, it, we've had to you know, we've had to churn on the spec based on the initial implementations. I mean, we've actually had some really good feedback on hey you can simplify this here you can simplify this here. But there hasn't been a lot of wow. This is completely wrong. It's actually been, you know, pretty pretty solid so far. Um, so we'll see we'll see how things keep going. But um, we've been we've been very pleased with the progress so far. Um, okay. Uh, so how to participate? We're wrapping up here. Um, let's see. So. Uh, uh, this first URL might start, am I repeating myself enough? SNEA.org slash swordfish. Um, you will find a couple of different places on the SNEA website. Um, the latest, this, this la the second one is a standard um, SNEA.org slash public review is where you will find all of the, tech, the latest technical, um, everything that's publicly available. We have a link to that on SNEA.org slash swordfish. Um, if you want to, if you're interested in joining the Twig, if you're already a SNEA member, um, uh, we would we would love to we would encourage you to join. We would love to have you. Um, if you are not already a SNEA member um, and are interested, we have several people around the conference that you know we'd be happy to talk to you about that. And uh, if you have additional information, there's two different places to come to. One is the SNEA.org/feedback portal. We also have a community forum. Um, that we'd love to have you provide input on. You can get to it at redfishforums.com or swordfishforums.com. We have an alias that will point you to the exact same place. Um, so that's basically how you provide input. That information, again, is at snea.org slash swordfish. So you don't even have to remember swordfishforums.com. You can just go to snea.org slash swordfish. It will tell you where that portal is. I think I have, yes. I can actually stop talking now. So um, remember, put your business card in to win an Echo Dot. Tweet. 
Uh, so, are, are there questions? It looks like there's a lot of uh, kind of retrieval built in the Swordfish. Is there uh, automation as well so that you can do actions based on the data you retrieve? Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a full Rust interface. So there's so there's full um, you know full CRUD, right? So everything you would expect to see in a management interface, right? So everything I showed here, you know, you kind of see all the gets, but you have full um, active management. Basically, um, we have a few things that are explicit actions, like resets that don't fit someplace else that you'll actually see called out as an explicit action. But everything else is just kind of implicitly built in. So if you want to you know, create volumes, create pools, all of that kind of stuff is, is in there. There's event notification, task management um, for, you know, for long running tasks. Um, so all of those things were in that initial little blurb that I had under services, so firmware updates, you know, all of the things you would expect to see in, in a management API. Um, if you have any specific, you know, questions about if something specifically in there, you can ask, or and I can, you know, kind of show you where those are. Was there other questions? Or, or sorry, should, did I need to repeat the question? By the way, it was was. Okay, hey, any next question? Yes. Um, these are not available yet. Um, they will be available uh, over the next couple of months. To find them, you can go to, to and the we have a couple of the uh, GitHub open repositories already published. These will be on github.com slash SNEA. Um, so the repository already exists for these first two. Um, I will be creating the ones for these. The Datadog, um, Datadog repositories typically get published onto Datadog. Due to SNEA policies, I will have to put a copy here and then also copy it over to Datadog. So um, it will end up being in both, in both places. Um, but you can find, and then we'll put documentation here that says it's also over there. But the other ones will all be published at github.com slash SNEA. Are they available in the Redfish site? Um, the Redfish site for all of their open source stuff is github.com slash DMTF. And the emulator will, will also have that information because the instructions for getting the emulator are go to github.com slash dmtf slash redfish emulator and install that. So any other questions? OK. For the more interesting part, Uh, let's see, Greg Turetsky, yay. Thank you for giving away one at every session. And nobody's been tweeting, so your chances are really good if you have a Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks everybody. Uh